Hello Makers and welcome to the studio. If this is your first time here, then so happy to have you along. We're going to be doing some fun stuff today as we do every single week, so if this is the kind of thing you find interesting, please subscribe. We'd love to be able to talk to you on a regular basis. Now this week we're going to be working on a truly mixed media type of uh, material. And I'm going to start with a, a good piece of heavy duty watercolor paper here. And what I want to do first of all is lay down a foundation of paint as my background in essence, my background colors. And so I have a, a number of uh, different series of uh, acrylic paints that I'm going to be working with here. And the objective here is really to create something that is going to give us a look and feel that's going to really work with what we want to do. Let me give you an example of some things we've done in the past. And it really is just these different places that you may go as you go out into the world, but kind of thematically. So for example, if you were down by the beach, what are the colors and what is the sensation of that compared to being in a forest, compared to being in a garden, compared to being in the desert? You get my point. And so we want to be able to create some sort of backgrounds or some just effects that we can work with and then we'll come back and we'll dress it up a little bit further. So let me show you how I end up doing this and I'm going to start uh, basically by grabbing a couple of uh, colors here. I have a magenta that I'm going to work with here and uh, what do we have here? This is a more of a turquoise or teal color that I want to work with and these guys these guys work well together and I'm thinking within the context of what I want to do on my piece of paper is I want to have kind of some different stripes of, of color that we can work with in the background. So I'm going to start by laying down a, a bit of a foundation. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to just over my paper, I'm going to add a couple drops of paint. I'm going to just kind of go down here a little bit. Okay, just don't want it to be too uniform, but an opportunity to say, okay, there's some paint right like that. I'm going to do the same thing with my magenta. By the way, if your paints have been sitting around for a while, it's always a good idea to give them just a quick shake before you use them. So you get all the pigment that you want in here. All right, so there we go. And there we are. So this is a good starting point. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my platen roller. And this is one you've probably seen me use a number of times if you're a regular at the channel. And this is generally used for removing, uh, taking ink and putting it onto a printed surface, something that you would use for block prints or something like that. I love using this as a way to just move paint around, uh, as well as it's a fantastic tool for adhering things. If you want to glue pieces of paper to a paper, this, this uh, ends up pressing it down nicely. But in this context, what we're going to do is we're going to use it to smear some paint. So I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to roll along like this. Now you get a sense of how that's going to work. And I've got some things going. I'm going to come over here. Let's get some, uh, some more. Pick up some paint. And again, we might have to repeat this a few times to get the full coverage that we want. But let's, uh, let's drop a little bit more blue in here. There we go. There's some blue. I'm going to do the same thing over here. So we're going to want to fill this whole area up. Okay. And let's do the same thing with the magenta. Let's get some more in here. And this is going to look pretty cool by the time we're done. And we're able to control the direction of the paint as much as we can because we are rolling it in specific directions. So again, do this. And again, do this. And one of the things you can also control here is uh, how much border you have. So for example, if I want to pick up a little bit of paint here, I can create an essence of border. So I have a white frame. So I can say, okay, I want the color to stop this far from the top or the bottom or the left or the right. And it's just an opportunity for us to have a little bit of control. And we don't want to overdo it here. We don't want to make it all muddy by over over rolling it, I just want to make sure I get some of these areas. But we're going to get a good combination, kind of a modeled effect of our areas where we have a little bit of white showing through and we have our combinations of magenta and teal working together. Now as you can see, that is not hard to do at all. But the cool thing about this is this is going to be a great foundation for what we need to do next, which is we're going to take some colored paper pieces and once this dries, we have something we can adhere to, glue onto, we're going to come back in here and we're going to dress this up and we're going to make it into something. I, I don't know what it's going to be yet. It's going to be awesome though. We'll find some colors that can work on top of our paint. So let's let this dry and uh, once that happens, we'll come back in and let's get some colored paper on this. Three days later. Welcome back. Now, as you can see, our paint has dried and we're ready for the next step. And by the way, when we're working with a project like this, where we have a painted background, we don't want to hurry it along because if this paint is not fully dry or the paper is not fully dry, 
it makes adhering pieces of paper to it a lot more challenging. So we're gonna give it plenty of time. And by the way, uh, you can hit this with a hair dryer if you need to speed things along. I have a video watch. I'll, I'll attach to the end card for you guys if you haven't seen that. Just the process of being able to make your paint dry a lot faster if you need to get to, uh, you know, other things. But in this case, what we wanna be able to do is use this as our background for what we wanna really build in front of this. Now these are bright colors, but they're rather subdued and because of the matte finish, they're really not popping that well, which is good because we want it to be a background. In order for us to uh, kind of work on this, I want to think about some colors that will work with the magenta and the teal background here and really pop things where this background color will support the colors on top of it, but they will stand out from the background. That's the objective. Uh, let's come in here. I think this pink color will be a good color. I'm going to create something. I don't know. Maybe it's going to look uh, like, a, like a plant of some sort. All right, let's, let's find out. It's going to... Yeah, a frond, right? Is that a frond? <laughs> Looks like a hand. Uh, we'll do that. And let's make it a little bit wider here. And again, we'll come down here. All right. And again, I'm trying to create some rather organic looking shapes. They don't have to symbolize anything at all. And what's really fun about them is when we put them in place, we can orient them differently. Maybe this looks better like that. Maybe it looks better like kind of like a jellyfish if we do that, right? So anyway, that could be the kind of thing that we decide that we'll drop something like that in there. And by the way, when I'm working with the different colors in here, I may not want to choose to just have one spot of color. I might want to actually have this gray matched up somewhere else and this pink match somewhere else, or maybe have three different things that I can work with. And so as I start to choose my palette, and I'm going to start by just creating single colored blobs or pieces here. Uh, you know what? I'm going to, I have this scrap of red. This doesn't have to be huge and doesn't have to dominate, but let me grab a couple, a couple just circles of this, and this will be, uh, you know, just part of our background. I have another fairly large piece. And that's the beautiful thing about working with colored paper scraps is that they get a second life. These things definitely never need to go in the trash because every single one of them represents a future palette, depending what your, what your needs are. Um, again, we're going to dry fit everything. We'll move things around. We'll get rid of things if they don't work for us. That's all part of what we can do here. Less vertical. Let's just grab a And uh, what am I going to do with this here? Again, kind of a fun organic shape. And get rid of that. And uh, yeah, it's not very interesting. Let me <laughs> let me put something like this. We we'll get a divot into it. That'll make it more interesting. There we go. Yeah, see, that sometimes that's all it takes is just to add a little bit more dimensionality to it. And we can drop this in here like this. Uh, and I'm starting to see kind of the pieces aligning the way I want them to. Uh, you know what? I'm going to put some uh, of this pink color. I'm going to match it up here, like I said. Or I could do hot pink, too. I, I have... No, let's see what happens here. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to do something a little bit more... Well, again, sometimes I let the paper talk to me. I say, all right, well, I've got this scrap of paper that I'm working with here. Uh, and if I were to just take a section of this... And just say, let's let's just get rid of all the, the sharp edges. Let's just make everything that we're doing in here kind of rounded. Then uh, what does that look like? All right, I'm going to grab this uh, this bubblegum pink, and again, let me just pull a chunk out of here, and uh, let's make it fit into the space that we have up there. And that. And there we go. There we go. And let's put that right in there. And again, I might, you know, I might not want to have everything totally in line here. I might want to kind of shift them over so they're kind of crossing each other a little bit. That might be a lot, lot more interesting visually than just perfectly straight lines. We need a little something down here at the bottom. You know what? I'm going to do something relatively simple. And I'm going to come in here and let's... Let's create just a piece that will fit in this area down here, if you can see that. And so it's going to just be kind of a little horizontal worm or <laughs> whatever we're creating here. And there we go. And so if I put that in there, again, nice anchoring colors. It's like your eyes just want to have kind of a balance of these different things that we can work with. 
One of the things that I have learned sometimes the hard way in art creation is that there are times when you just have to stop. <laughs> you know, when do I when do I find the time to, to, to stop doing what I'm doing here? And uh, you know, part of me is thinking, well, we could fit something else in this space here, and there's also a space here. And maybe we'll do that. Let me see if there's anything else in my in my bucket of goodies here that will Oh, you know what? I've got a, a light purple here that will actually, because of just the tint, it's got a lot more white in it, will really pop well. You know what? Let's, let's give it a try. So, cut a chunk out of here. All right, and let's, uh, I don't know, what do we want to do with this? Again, some sort of uh, organic, mostly rounded shape. And just let the scissors and let your imagination guide you. Okay, so there's that. And how does that look if we put it in like that? It's a little too close to this shape, to be honest. So maybe yeah, put it up there so they're not right next to each other. You know, I am finding that the cutout pieces, like this and this, are really interesting. They're visually interesting, and that's making me think, you know what, maybe I should go and, you know, do a few more cutouts. Maybe there's some room in the blue and in here, and, you know, just... For some of these larger pieces, maybe just create a portal of some sort that I can work with here. Let's do it with this pink piece. And move the paper when we can. And uh, I don't know, it's going to look like a space a spaceship by the time we're done. Yeah, you see how that dresses it up? Yeah, again, that's a, that's not a bad bad thing to do at all. Just let a little of the more of the background through. And so those colors really can work together. Okay, so now that we have everything where we kind of want it to be, we can make these decisions on the way. We're going to grab our trusty glue stick, uh, and I'm also going to grab a, um, a gluing sheet. Now I can use just a standard piece of copier or printer paper, and I just like to use this as a way for me to be able to glue the pieces down and, and get less glue on my actual artwork. It just makes it a lot cleaner. Now. I've laid things out in a way that I think is going to work. Does this mean it's permanent? Does it mean that I can't change my mind while I'm gluing things down? Not at all. And what I might do is start with some of the bigger pieces and then build some of the smaller pieces around them. Let me start with the, this gray piece right here to begin with. And let me get some glue on the back of this. And I will just mention that when you're gluing onto a painted surface, sometimes having a sufficient amount of glue is a good idea in that it's, it's not the... I'm not, I'm not going to say it's not a good gluing surface, but it's not as optimal as, like, say, putting it straight on paper, right? And as I mentioned before, if uh, the paint is still wet in any way, it's going to make it even more challenging to, uh, to glue onto. So I'm going to take this piece and uh, we'll drop it right in there. Now, as I have shared with you in the past, if you've seen my videos, this uh, platen roller, the one we actually use to put the paint on the paper, is also one of my go-to tools when it comes to making sure that pasted objects get stuck down firmly. I just roll over this guy and this just allows me to make sure that if there's even pressure and all of the glue on that piece of paper has some sort of contact with the piece of paper underneath it. And you can always come back if you need to roll these every so often as they're going through a drying process if they start to pick up a little that will work. But simple enough we have our first piece down and uh, I'm going to go through this process in, in a very similar way and uh, I'm going to just glue everything down that needs to be glued. I'm not sure we need to do this in real time, so uh, I'll fast forward through this, and then we'll talk about what kind of the next stages are once we get done with that. Okay, now everything has been glued down. We'll give it a little bit of time to uh, to dry, but uh, for the most part, I'm I'm really pleased with how this has turned out. 
it's uh, it's got some bright color. And again, you know, when we're building something like this and we're kind of dealing with all the small parts, sometimes it's hard to keep in, in, in mind that at the end of what we're trying to do here, the result is not all the small parts, it's how they all work together. So when I look at this piece of art on a wall, my brain goes, wow, bright and colorful and abstract and, and interesting. And then only in certain circumstances will I home in on a specific part of this and say, oh, look at that, that piece right there, very cool. It's about how all the colors, how the forms, how the contrast, how everything works together. I like this one. I'm going to take this and put it in the Spectiva Studios gallery. I'm going to add it into the uh, Out and About series. The gallery, by the way, you could probably uh, already see what it looks like in the gallery if you look right about here. That's right. And uh, if you're interested in, uh, in procuring this piece, uh, certainly check it out. There'll be a link down below along with uh, for the materials we've used in this video. We'll share that with you as well. But that's what I wanted to share with you today. This is a, a one hour masterpiece that definitely doesn't take a lot uh, of time to create. And I truthfully like to be able to create several of these at the same time by just putting like four pieces of paper down and saying, okay, d different color themes. This is going to be magenta teal. We're going to have another one that's going to be blue yellow. We're going to have another one that's going to be, you know, this color. And uh, it really gives you some really fun foundations to work on. And as you can see, not hard to make, but the results are pretty darn cool when you're done. Anyway, thanks so much for dropping by. Please subscribe if you haven't already. We'd love to be able to talk to you. We drop a video every single week. But that's all I have for you today. This is Spider, and I'll see you next time.